Today we're going to take a look at using reference images to match film photography to digital photography. Here we have a beautiful collection of images from Katie Mary of a shoot she did. I just pulled a few highlights of the different outfits. The ones marked in blue are film images that she's already had scanned by her lab and returned. And then we're going to match those to these digital images. I do know that the exposure is a little low and the color balance, uh, white balance is a little blue. And I think that's because uh, the windows in the studio here have a slight blue tint to them and um, it made a cooler edit. This is generally not how Katie's images come in, but um, it'll be a great way to show you guys how to edit the white balance to get this beautiful film look of her Fuji 400H film. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is pull up develop mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the RA tool, which is right here. And that's going to allow us to pull our reference image. Um, if you're not shooting film or don't have film scans, you can do this with a hero image that you've already edited for a session that you love the overall look for. And you want to make sure the rest of the collection is cohesive and matches that. You, you can pull that image up into this area as well. Use that to edit the rest of your images on the right. But today, for the sake of matching film, um, for the hybrid shooters out there, we're going to go ahead and start with um, KT's film work. So let's go ahead and just pull a simple image. We'll start here on the end. Um, so this is obviously the details from the shoot. Uh, we have an image here, which is the digital image. Make sure there aren't any others. And uh, the first thing I usually do is adjust the white balance, get it kind of close. Um, I lean on the auto. If Lightroom is going to give me a decent start, I'll lean on that just to save some time tweaking. And then from there, I will hand tweak from there. So I feel like this white balance is pretty close. And then I'm going to go through the collection of presets. I'm going to go ahead and use KT's today since this is for her. And um, take a look at the overall tones and see which one is going to fit best for the look and I'm just using this side image here to really look at the colors. Those are matching. The shoe base is matching. Of course this is a lot of white so there's not a ton to match here but this gives you an idea of how to use the um, reference tool to really hone in on your film scans. Let's go ahead and pull up the next image. Slide through and grab a matching outfit and I'm going to do the same thing. Start with the white balance, tweak a little, um, and for this one, because of the black, um, I'm going to really watch the black tones um, because each of her presets in her collection have a different black tone. See, that one's a little more magenta, that one has a little more green, that one leans a little green as well, um, and that one's pretty clean, but this one pulls too much warmth out, so I actually think I'm going to probably use four. Actually, I think I'm going to use three. And from there, I'm just going to do the same thing in here. This is a little flat um, in here with the film scan in comparison to her digital. So I'm just going to tweak a little. I'm actually going to add a little vibrance in to bring a little more color into the hair. Take a tiny bit of that magenta out. There you go. Let's pull up the next image. We're just going to go backwards here as we go. Beautiful gown, same thing, auto. Lift that exposure up a little so we can see. Definitely going to need to cool it down. And I think three. I'm actually going to go with one. Cool it down again. Definitely going to add some vibrance to this because it looks like they really pushed it a little on the film scan. Got to boost those whites. A little magenta. And pull back the warmth a touch. I'm just really tweaking to get as close as I can. If they were shot differently, then um, they're going to be slightly different because they weren't shot exactly the same. So I'm just tweaking the best I can. Little contrast there we go that helps because we really feel like there's some strong contrast in here so I'm gonna work with that there and then next we have this one I'm gonna pull two images for this one 
Same thing, Otto is way too warm for KT's work. And I'm pretty sure three is the one we used for this one. And same thing, you can really see we got a little boost in the color here. It's the same thing. I'm just going to push that vibrance because vibrance doesn't crank up the saturation like that. It really just pushes those tones and gives you that extra little oomph without oversaturating your image. Pull back the contrast a bit. Um, I feel like this was probably shot differently. Um, and also film, you know, the, the aperture is has more depth of field than it does on um, digital. So sometimes you'll see that even if you shot them the same, you know, 2.0 on each, this still might look a little more crisp than the film. So what I'm doing is just lifting shadows and playing with the temp. That looks good. I feel like we can probably whiten these whites a little. Go, that helped right there. Blacks look great. And then basically, you know, if I was editing a session, I would literally just copy this over and drop it. <laughs> and then it wouldn't have to re edit. But for the sake of this video, let's just go ahead and edit from the beginning. See, I think you guys really like to see the process. Stick with three because that's what we used on the other. We definitely pushed that vibrance up. And so the copy and paste would save you all of these fine tweaks. There we go. Next we have this dress. And more than not, you're going to end up sticking with the same preset. And I'm just clicking through them so you guys can kind of see the options as I go through and how I would visually. So here I'm going to watch the purple because um, this number two has the most magenta. Um, one looks good. Two is maybe a little too magenta for this shoot. Three looks great. When three is the one we've been using. Four is a little too green in the base. And five is just too desaturated. So let's just go ahead and stick with three. And I'm pulling back a touch of the magenta. I'm gonna push that vibrance a little. See if that helps me in the scheme. It did. Need a little more magenta back in. And for this one, her skin in the digitals are, is falling a little flat, so I'm just going to push it just a tiny bit. It's not consistent. Um, this outfit, her skin was very, very porcelain, um, but in these ones, it leaned a little warmer than it did in that lighting, so I'm having to tweak between them. Next up is the pink dress. We'll go here, auto. And like I said, I'm really just, I'm watching her skin, I'm watching the overall tones. I feel like I'm gonna stick with three. And you can see there's definitely that Cool, almost cyan in her skin here in the film scan. So I'm going to do my best to mimic that. So definitely push those whites. Definitely add a little more pink in and pull out some of the warmth. I'm going to drop these shadows down just a hair and that helps deepen up this area right in here. And I do feel like we still have some contrast in here. Just not something we usually add to KT's edits, but in this case, it just needs a little extra. We're actually usually pulling contrast out versus putting it in. Let's go ahead and push that vibrance. You can see how it bring that, brought the pink lip alive and some of the deeper pinks in the gown. This one may take a little more tweaking to get exact, but that's pretty close for the sake of the video. And then, do we already do this one? Yes. Let's go to the white gown. And I brought a couple of these in as well. This is a fan favorite. Gorgeous pose. Gorgeous gown. And 
I think this one, this one's super clean, so I'm gonna stick with one, which is probably the most neutral out of KT's collection. And you see how I'm instantly pulling back that contrast a little. I'm gonna pull down these highlights just a bit so I can push the whites a little more. Just counterbalancing the two because if I just crank the whites, this would get really hot. But if I pull back the highlights, it helps keep it from blowing out too much and looks a little more like film. Honestly, there, that's what I would leave it at right there. Let's go ahead and do the other. One on this one. Keep pulling back that more. The film really read this background whiter than the digital, so you can see just how white and clean this is. Um, it's a little hard to mimic um, because they both were shot differently. I can see the depth is pretty strong. Let me see if I can tell what this was shot at. Yeah, this was shot at four. Um, let me pull this image back up. I lost it when I dropped out. So this was shot at four. Um, this possibly could have been shot at four, but because of the contact lens or whatever lens she was using, the depth of field, you see the drop off is just heavier. So we're dealing with a lot more contrast and detail in this image than um, the film image. Uh, just a little more light was let into this one. So we're just gonna kind of play with it and see if we can get it close. We're not gonna be able to get it exactly because they were not shot the same, but we're gonna play with it and get it as close as possible. There you go. And then we have left. I think we just have oh, let's go ahead and do this one real quick. I apologize, I may sound a little nasally today. I'm getting over a cold, that's why this video is late. Um, I had a little bit of a head cold the last couple weeks, so I'm still dealing with some lingering side effects I do not want to go away so this one we're just getting in the ballpark because we don't have a reference image for this so we're just going to get kind of close and keep it consistent so the portfolio there we go and then the last image this beautiful black gown same thing pull back and for this one again, I'm going to take a look at those blacks as I'm selecting. Two green. That's good. It just pulls too much out of her skin. She's so porcelain. Yep, I'm going to stick with one on this one. And same thing, um, this was shot at 3.6, and I can already see just how much, just look at her sleeve here, how much depth we have in the image. So this might have been shot closer to 2, maybe 2.8. Um, so we don't have the same fall off um, in depth of field that we have in the film image, which also means we don't have the same lighting, because <laughs> the lens on the film image let more light in, this one didn't let as much in. So we're dealing with some color differences there from that. So for these, you're just going to want to get them close. There we go. Blacks really help. So I'm pulling the shadows down. I tried pushing the contrast, but it just made it too hard. So instead, I'm pulling the shadows back to kind of deepen up these blacks a little bit. And I probably could use three as well. Three would work on this. Um, it gave a little bit of the tone in the black that we didn't have in one. You can see how clean that black is here. So three gave it a little more of that Fuji film tone in there. Um, so either one of those would work great. But that's a look at uh, matching film with this beautiful uh, editorial by KT Mary. Um, and this, like I said, this reference image practice works great. Even if you're not a film shooter, you could use a hero image. Like if I edited one of these, you know, say this image, 
and um, wanted to use this the base for the rest of the shoot, I would pull this image up into the left and use it as my reference for the rest of the shoot. Or um, if you're a new photographer and you're looking for inspiration or you have a style that you're trying to recreate or look for, use a reference image from that person or style and pull that into your gallery to really hone in on that white balance, the tones, the contrast, the shadows, the overall look. It's easier to do when you have them side by side like this. You really can get a better vibe for the tones when you can see them next to each other and make those fine tweaks. And um, over time, you'll get consistent at it and you won't need the reference image as much because you know the tweaks that are needed, um, but it's a great way to really hone in on a specific look. Thanks for following along. Be sure to click the subscribe button below and we're working hard to get shorts and YouTube videos out every week for you guys.